o'clock, we will go ahead and call a meeting to order. We have all board members present except for Megan, who is on a fun family vacation right now. Sure. Family. So uh, we're going to look for. Uh, oh, we got some additions to the agenda. Uh, that is correct. So we have our contract for our uh, elementary principal. Um, that was she met with the um, admin negotiating team yesterday, and so that contract has been added for a recommendation for hire in the consent agenda today. With that, I'm looking for a motion to approve the agenda. I'll Adam. make that motion. And a motion second. Bruce, a second from Rick. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Uh, we have nobody here for public comment. <clears throat> we'll move on to the consent agenda. Janelle, I'll, well, actually, I'll push, push over to Cheryl for bills first. Okay. Oh, I, I had a chance to go and look through the bills. Um, everything was pretty much normal. Not a whole lot going on right now, of course, just in between times. But um, I saw a bill for AP Fem Facility Management Consulting for a custodial study. And Janelle had spoken to us about that earlier. And that kind of stood out to me, and Janelle walked me through it, and she's going to give us some highlights here tonight. Yep. She gave us her report. And also, uh, the last bill, I believe, for school perceptions. Correct. For the community survey. And that was so beneficial to us. Yeah. It really gets across to us what the community is thinking, and staff don't want to talk to us. <laughs> but those are the only two things that I really noted. Everything else is pretty much normal. I think the consent agenda was the minutes from last month's meeting. Everybody had an opportunity to go through that. And Janelle, I'll pass it over to you for personnel items. And sure, absolutely. So we have a, a Miller Mum resignation for the PAC um, from his PAC position and then a recommendation for hire. Um, I do, in my administrative report, I do have a little bit more information about Cassie, um, but just so that you um, do know that uh, the um, admin negotiations team met with her yesterday morning. Um, walk through kind of her background, the, the process that was utilized for this position. Um, there ended up being 16 different people um, that were, there were teachers, parents, um, administration, um, support staff. There was so a pretty robust group of individuals um, that met with uh, six different candidates on the Friday before the weekend of the 4th. So it was a really, um, it was a full, full push. Um, and the and the committee really did come together and, and recommended uh, Cassie as hire. So I'm, I'm comfortable and excited to bring her forward as a recommendation for hire to me today. Uh, with that, I look for a motion to approve the Senate agenda as presented. So, so moved. A motion from Cheryl. I'll second. Second from Maggie. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carry. <laughs> Uh, we'll go on to communication items, Janelle. Back to All you. right. So um, I am going to pull up my administrative report and I'm going to share my screen. There are going to be a number of items that are linked in um, that are linked into my report here today. Uh, All right. I am presenting to everyone. That's wonderful. Okay. All right. So um, I, again, um, I am excited to introduce you to Cassie Akerson, and Cassie is actually here with us this evening. So um, Cassie is coming to us from St. Michael Albertville. Uh, she was the supervisor of curriculum and student programming uh, prior to her experience at STMA. Uh, she was a QCOM coordinator and PLC coordinator. Uh, and she taught fourth grade. She has experience in the Wilmer Public School District and uh, Howard Lake Riverly Winston, uh, where she began her teaching career. So I'm excited to have her aboard. So as you, uh, as it became official this evening, uh, please welcome Cassie to the district. So welcome aboard, Cassie. Um, I've moved on to some indoor air quality updates. Um, I thought it was helpful for us to just kind of see a breakdown of the zoning in the building. Um, as they're talking about different numbers or different letters of the building. So this is kind of the, the key point to the building. Um, you'll see my cursor here is this would be the front of the building where um, we park. This is kind of the back, um, you know, where the, the baseball field is. Um, and so as we look at the, 
descriptors of what's been happening this week, you'll see the, the A, B, C, and D representation on the diagram. Um, so the louvers in area B um, were installed. Uh, 16 of the 28 uh, perm are permanently set in place. Piping and electrical connections to all the units are, re are remaining. Um, you'll see holes are being drilled, electrical uh, switch gears, and um, is, there's an update there. Structural, uh, structural steel for wall openings is set in place. Um, you will see that as we look ahead, I'm not going to read all of them. You can read the bullets that are in place there for the updates, but, but it's really, I, again, I think if we are, if you're really in tune with what is happening in a, these are going to make a lot more sense to me. What's most, what's most important is I'm seeing progress incrementally throughout in the weeks. Okay. Um, the two week look ahead, they're completing the structural structural sheet for masonry openings, um, completing the holes into the tunnels, starting to set the VUVs in area A. Um, they are uh, pulling wire above the ceiling electrical conduit, um, connecting the power to the VUVs and starting the steam piping. Uh, this is the other area that I really pay attention, a lot of attention to are the issues or concerns. Um, so the scheduling, the manpower continues to be an issue. One of them that was specifically noted is that they have one man on the, um, the piping and they really need two or three. Um, he continues to push, they have been pushing them and they'll continue to. So clearly that perks my ears up a little bit and, and in meeting with him on um, Monday, um, really what that means is um, he is going to push them to pull more people. And when, and maybe you may remember back when we started talking about this contract, um, some of the requirements because of the federal, um, the use of federal funds is making sure that everything was, was um, in the union standards and paid at the correct rate of pay. So they do have to make sure as they pull in additional people, they're following all of those protocols. He's comfort comfortable and confident that they will but he does know that they have to follow a process there as well. Um, and then you'll see the installation of, of structural steel is taking longer than expected. They're making progress and I'm only mildly concerned is what his, his statement was. Again, my follow up to that is, so tell me more about that. What does that mean? Um, and really it is, again, the, his job is to put the pressure on and he knows that the people that are some of the subcontractors are gonna pull in additional resources to make sure that we are on board. Not once did I get any inkling that there would be any concern for our timeline. And so to me, that's good news, okay? Uh, the other area that I wanna pull back for you is just an update to our strategic plan tracker. Um, so I'm now gonna share this instead of the agenda. Um, Oh, I don't want that. Sorry. I'm telling you, I need a driver. A tab. Oh. The worst is when you have to do that in front of all of us. I yeah. know. Well, and then too, I'm trying to net look on the. <laughs> That's what happened to all of them. All right. So on the strategic plan tracker, so again, this is, um, you'll see all of the months, you know, this, the original one is, is the one that popped up. We most recently looked at 524. Um, so I've updated for you the 712, and you'll see some of the movement here and some of the things that were we have um, that I have identified as items in exploration, items in planning, um, and then as I move over, you'll see items that we move from either implementation into the green or the blue. I'm sorry, which was really already this the keeping that that landing place for the stuff that's been we've been working on. And that is really kind of continuing in the works so we don't forget it, forget that it was there, but yet they, it's, it's ongoing, okay? So as you come back and take a look at that, um, one of the items that is in exploration right now is, is um, and I've identified it as a um, in exploration because really taking a look at how to um, bring in some additional support for district staff using both the character strong and the seven mindsets. Those are both items that we've had exposure to and information from. Uh, seven mindsets is the information, the, the SEL curriculum that we have for our students. And there is a, a, a staff component to that. So taking a look at how we can use that and, and continue the growth um, 
for not only our, our students, but for our staff. Taking a, a look at moving into the items and planning section, uh, you will see um, I moved the budget evaluation to recommend reductions um, while aligning with the strategic plan. So as a reminder, when we approved the budget um, last month, um, there is a deficit budget of about $416,000. And so we are gonna be taking a look at how to make recommendations for reductions yet remain in alignment with the strategic plan. Okay, so that's gonna be part of the, those, those are the planning pieces. Um, I did move the, um, the we've been keeping the um, operating referendum kind of exploration. I moved that out because we are now into a campaign um, based on where we're at in this meeting this, uh, on this agenda. So operating referendum campaign, I, it is going to be important to make sure that we have multiple facets of, of communication in many ways, but with a very streamlined information, streamlined process of information. So that's why this is kind of in planning. And I, I very much expect in the next month that that's gonna to move to implementation, but we're, we're can't move it until we approve it, okay? Um, we have board community communications regarding revenue expenditures. Um, next month, um, at the end of August, you will see our first report, which is going to have a different, uh, a, just a, a different type of explanation around our um, expenditures year to date in comparison to years past. Really trying to, again, get information out into the public and to the board about our finances in a way that's a little bit more consumable than just a, a one shot spreadsheet when we do a budget update or a, a revision. Um, but it, it will have um, a little bit more um, annualized information so we can compare year over year. And I think that will be helpful. Um, I also brought forward, here's where I have the building, buildings and grounds FTE. So I wanna walk through, I've moved it from um, exploration into planning because I wanted to bring you an update on where that's at as well. So uh, let me shift tabs here. Um, so AP Consulting, as um, Cheryl talked a little bit about, is the individual that I've been consulting with who is, uh, who has experience not only in a larger district as a director of buildings and grounds, but also in smaller districts. Um, and I think that there's a lot of benefit to having somebody that is in that niche come in with an outside perspective and take a look at, at our spaces and our service. So here's really a, the, just a really quick snapshot of an analysis of our custodial service and support. Um, this is still in the works. This is not fast, hard, done. So this is super high level. Okay, so I, I hesitate to, to share this as a, this is, but I, it, this is a progress update for you all. So um, really one of the things that he did is he came in and looked at all of our spaces to look at the type of flooring that we have, to look at the types of classrooms, whether they have sinks, whether they have bathrooms, all of the components that are within the classroom to determine kind of the best flow for our custodial work and along with the best supplies, tools, mechanisms, just really what, what is the best kind of recommendation. He did not come in and make it as a, how many people do you have? Where is your, he walked in and gave me this recommendation outside of knowing who we have and what we have, okay? So that was our first starting point. So as you can see, you know, the, the, the maps are zoned with colors. Um, and then what he did is he brought in recommendations and suggestions for the flow, the efficiency, and consistency across the district. I think one of the things that is important as we look at any of our, our whether it's programming, our, our contracts, our service, or whatever it is that we have and we do, um, when we can bring consistency across the district, I think that that's beneficial. So one of the things that he then made within those recommendations are just some checklists. Um, and, and you will see these are very detailed, um, but it really is, you know, in every, um, so it's, it's just a, a task card of every bathroom. Here's the process. Here's the, here's the stuff you use. Here's the, the process to do it. Just really systematizing the work that happens. So it happens if, if we have a, 
um, a, a number of custodians that are gone at this building, we could have somebody come and support. We can, there's, there's better systemization across the district if we have consistent expectations, okay? So this is one of the, uh, again, one of the resources. These again are in draft, okay? This has been reviewed and it is being reviewed by our individuals that are on the staff and I'm gaining their feedback about the tools, about the, um, the chemicals, for example. So these aren't fast and hard, but this is a, just an example of the work that's been ongoing to try to systematize our processes across the district, okay? Any questions on that? How are they feeling so far about? Um, I, there, as I as I kind of expected, I mean, there's there's some pushback of why are we why are you asking us to do this differently? So um, uh, again, what I've recognized is that I think when they first came on board, I don't think they had a lot of direction, and and so I do recognize and honor that they just they made it work. So as we come in and look at how can we do it more efficiently and effectively? Do you have the right tools? Do we have the, the as an example, do they have the carts that they need? And if they don't have a cart that they need, of course they're gonna be going back to their cleaning closets 15 different times, for example, to gather what they need. So what can we provide for them for the tools so that it makes it a little bit better flow? Um, our next step is to um, meet uh, at the end of July and get more specific feedback about, okay, so like the chemicals, for example, if you don't like the chemicals, then let's talk through, is it the smell? Is it the cleanliness? What is it about them? Hilliard is our current provider of our chemicals and they come out and when we, and they've done this in multiple schools, they'll come out and provide training. They'll provide you with the, um, uh, in the in like for example in the cleaning closets you've got um, you can set your uh, distribution system in our cleaning closet that's got everything ready to go they can push a button it pre measures it pre it does all of those things for um, for us but if we don't know how to use them and if we don't you know so some of those things are let's just make sure that everybody knows what what's available to them and those are kind of our next steps um, I think the the bigger Obviously, as we look at this, one of the other things that I've talked about a number of times is making sure that we're being efficient in our recommendation for hire. So if we are, if we are maximizing our efficiency and we're not, we don't have enough people, I'm absolutely going to come back to the board and say, we need, I, I recommend we have more people, um, but let's maximize our efficiency and then, and then make that recommendation if necessary. All right, um, so I'll come back to the strategic plan tracker. Um, and then I, actually the only other thing on there is um, our social media usage. So let me get our um, that tab back up so that actually I'm gonna pull up the actual social media usage tab and then I'll share that out um, because that's just the, the data. Um, And this is a, the, our annual data. Um, so you'll see. So you'll see our YouTube channel. Um, you'll see the number of views um, and the watch hours. So again, this was, if you take, take a look at the dates, this is July 1st of 2021 to June 30th of 2022. So this is kind of our summative for the whole year, okay? Um, our district views are 74,000. Uh, the watch time hours is 13,000 and the subscribers added is 218. Um, our uploaded videos, you'll see how many videos, oh, sorry about that, they didn't mean to move that. Uploaded videos, you'll see how many hours are there. Our s'more newsletter, so this is the Bulldog Bark. Um, one of the things that we learned um, as we started tracking this information, and, and this is where I think looking at this as a tracker, the strategic plan tracker has been beneficial. As we do our s'more newsletters in our classroom, our, our building communication, they're going to change the way that, that they distribute it 
so that they can track from a, uh, each building level how many views they have. The way that the bark goes out, he can, um, Mr. Dickhausen can view that. The way that our current um, building s'mores go out, the principals can't see how many views they have. So we're gonna change that so we can track it and really understand that level of communication. So that's a, a benefit that has come out of looking at how we track the data, okay? Uh, you'll see our district website um, has a, a total of 198,000 visits. Um, monthly average is about 16,500. And you will see again on kind of that circular uh, graph, what areas are, are the top. So you've got our departments, um, just the district home, our user page. So again, um, what I looked at when I last month when we did a summary of kind of the social, the, the good news and the things that was happening, um, we post a lot of information on our news and announcements page. But as you can see from this graph, only 7.1% of our hits are going to that page. So we wanted to take a look at how can we get that information out in a different way. Okay. So this is, um, this is just a summary of the social media um, statistics for our web page. You'll see our district's Facebook page has 50,000 um, page reaches, um, 1,083, I think that 90. says, 93 Facebook, oh, might be time for me to get my glasses updated. Um, our, that's how many page likes there are. Um, and then you'll see our school district Instagram um, usership is at about 5,000 with 500-ish Instagram followers. So that information is kind of the, the final, I guess, tab on our tracker that I wanted to show you. Um, I did move over the areas to the incorporated as our literacy boot camp um, and our operating referendum updating because we've kind of done those pieces. They're in the works, but they've moved along with our, um, our open houses, our shared services. Um, so those we haven't forgotten about those, but you'll see it, they've just moved over to the implemented and ongoing. Okay, um, and that is, I believe, let's pull that, pull that back up. That's my update for today. Do you have any questions at all to read that? No additional questions. We'll move on to potential ed board update. It was the fastest meeting ever. <laughs> minutes. I was, we didn't really have anything of significance, just voting on handbooks and policy. Yeah. Typical of West beginning West. of right. fiscal year yes. process. Few language updates. Yeah, not handbooks and policy class. Um, probably the biggest thing that's still outgoing with the West Central Ed District is their contract negotiations. Yes. Um, they Their teachers um, have they voted to um, have a certified union versus a handbook. So that's been a, an ongoing process and we don't know where that's at to this point either. So, and there's two new soups, right? Two new soups, which is kind of um, Albany and Sakai Center. Other dynamic, yeah. Okay. Great, we'll go on to old business policies, uh, second reading. I did not have any comments or communication um, around the second reading. So my recommendation or around the after the first reading. So my recommendation would be to um, enter to look for approval. Yep. For a motion to approve policy 417, 418, 419, 20, 27, as presented and remove policy 440 to be covered by policy 529. Thank you. Motion. The motion from Rick. I'll second. Second from Maggie. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Both say no. Carried. New business, reorganization, activities. That bunch of stuff on here. Yep. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm going to quick share um, the agenda because there's a number of items that are in the reorganizational. Uh, the first item is, is the recommendation for an official newspaper. The press has been our, the Painesville Press has been our our newspaper for a number of years, and the recommendation is to carry that forward for the 22-23 school year. Um, authorization for payment of bills. So this is a pretty standard authorization. The really, if you look at the people who are identified, 
It's going to be the business manager, our associate business manager, our admin assistant, and myself. Um, so that really is so that if there is a bill that needs to be paid prior to board up or, or prior to a board meeting, um, because of a because of service charges or things like that, we can do it if necessary. Um, but those are the only individuals that would be eligible to do that. You will see census takers. Uh, census takers have been identified as Matt Dickhausen and Miranda Tice. Um, that is the same as last year. You will see hearing officers for hot lunch. I remember last year having a conversation about what does that mean? And there was no need for that last year. And I would, we'll see if there's a need for it this year, but that would be um, the board chair and, and the superintendent as the hot lunch um, officers, hearing officers. Uh, the banking, you will notice the recommendation um, based on our RFP or our proposal that came back last month that our payroll account, general account, and activities account have all transitioned to Magnify Financial, and we maintained PMA Financial Network for um, our large. For, and PMA is the same organization that comes out and does our truth and taxation um, information for fall. You will see a commencement date is recommended to be in the same timeline as has consistently been the Sunday of uh, the Sunday, that Sunday after Memorial weekend. So June 4th, 2 p.m. in the Painesville High School. And then probably the most, um, the, the area where I wanna just draw some attention to are the fees on the fee schedule. So I'm gonna pull that up for everybody and I'll share that as well. All right, on the fee schedule, um, the areas that, that I'll draw your attention to that have, have there was a recommendation for change. The first comes down um, on the meal costs. Um, we are recommending um, an increase by 10 cents on um, each of the meals. So instead of for an elementary meal, instead of 265, it went to 275. We're also recommending a uh, 10 cent increase from um, 50 cent from 40 cents for milk to 50 cents for milk. Uh, you'll see the same uh, 10 cent in increment for the middle school. Uh, at the elementary, there are not extra entree opportunities. There is a there is a recommendation for a 25 cent increase on the extra entree. Okay, so you'll notice that that is different. Um, that is a different uh, rate than just 10 cents. Otherwise, uh, each of the, the meal recommendations are a standard meal was 10 cent increase, the milk was 10 cent increase, um, and then the adult, uh, sorry, the entrees, additional entrees were 25 cents across the board. The other area that I um, am recommending a, a revision to that we've not looked at for a number of years um, is uh, a mileage reimbursement. Um, we had different mileage rate reimbursement for different groups. Um, and some of it was based on the fee schedule. Some of them were identified via contract. Um, and, and so for systemization and really consistency purposes, my recommendation is to go with the IRS mileage rate. Um, I think the majority of our mileage is, um, is administrative mileage which was the IRS rate. So this is not gonna have a significant financial impact for us, but it does provide continuity and, and just everyone gets the same mileage rate, which is the IRS rate. You know the reason why it was different at one time? I'm just curious, it's odd. I, hey. I think it's, an, and I don't know, and yeah. it, it had been 50 cents for like ever. And sure. I wanna, okay, not forever, but since <laughs> people that remembered it, since they were hired, it was 50 cents. So I just don't think it had ever been reviewed or revised. Um, and I think um, IRS standardization, I mean, that fluctuates. You know, some years it goes up, some years it goes down, but it's it's set and then it, we don't have, we're not bound to buy anything that's in. And I think we've talked about it here and there over the years. And I think we, as a board, we always felt that it should just be the IRS. Okay. I think regulation and then you don't have to deal with it. It doesn't have to come right. here anymore. It is, it is unusual this year. They actually just changed in the month of July to I think 60 cents a mile now or something like that. Okay. So it's very unusual for them to change it twice with inflation. Yep. Yep. 
Uh, the other area that I'm recommending um, some revision and that the, it's been a number of years since these have been addressed as well um, is to take a look at our sub rates. Um, so when we look at our sub rates, the recommendations that I've, I've put here for you are, are based on where the starting wage is for the new contracts that were negotiated last year. So as a, for instance, um, our clerical staff is um, the starting wage for our clerical staff is 1671. Now we had a very low rate prior. It was about $13 an hour. We did not have, and we do not have a number of individuals who are, who do that role for us. If our secretaries are out because it is so specialized and really the work that they do is, is um, very specific to the buildings. So, um, there are not a lot of subs that serve in that capacity. Um, you'll notice our custodian substitute, um, the starting wage for our, our custodians are, is 1650. So you're seeing a recommendation of 1550 for a sub rate. Our paraprofessionals, you're seeing a recommendation of $14. Our 1449 is the starting wage for our paras. Food service, the starting wage is 1472. And our van driver, and actually this is kind of a moot because we don't have that anymore, but is it is thirteen ninety, but so that's why you'll see the recommendations that you see. I have a question about the athletic and admission fees. So I know there is help available for families if they can't afford to pay for some of these fees. Correct. How widely spread is it that do families know that you? Because I guess my point is I don't want any of our students to not be able to participate because they don't have the means, and that parents would know they would be supported and where would they go? I don't know, is that clear and open to? Um, I, I will reach out to um, our coaches and our, cause I, my understanding is that there are a number of students who finances are not a barrier so they can participate. Um, I, I will look into how that happens and where that goes. Um, but I, I know that, um, our coaches specifically are, are certain that kids are going to be able to participate and a fee is not going to be a barrier, but I will, I can follow up on that. So I just am curious if there's like a parent says like, that's the very even before parents, like you're not going to be in this because it's going to cost too much because you do have to, you know, get to, uh, get to get your wellness checks, like I think in 10th grade. So there are other costs that they're potentially looking at. And then the other thing in addition as well, I don't even know if we have resources available, if there are families that want to attend, but they can't attend. If the two, if there's two adults, that's $12. If they have a couple of kids, you know, it adds up quickly. Are we leaving behind some families that sure. like to attend, but it's, you know, going to two basketball games a week, that's just completely over their budget. Right, right. Um, I will, I'm not certain on that one to know if that has been a, um, something that's been accessible. Um, I can find out on that. Thanks. Stuff like that. I'm curious if Mr. Yeah. ever helped with that. Yeah. So no, I'll I'll that's a booster club help okay. out with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think also, how does it get to the parents? So you talked about coaches and stuff. What Maggie's talking about is a parent sitting at That's home different. making a decision and what your analysis is probably is not the conversation that took place with the youth. Right. Okay. Right. Now, and we got other things to do. Um, you're not going there well, because they might not know. And so I think when you're talking communication, you gotta get something to the pay. Parents so they know what's going on and then they can they can handle it within the family however they want. Yeah. Okay. Our goal should be to get as many students involved and as many extra activities because I mean, we don't have an issue with graduation rates, but we know that students are tend to do better and have higher graduation rates with being more involved. So any barriers that we could yeah. okay. address to get students involved. Talk about you know, getting the free news lunch applications, oh. you know, yeah. getting those in the hands, but on that same note, the, the, the information that probably is available, um, whether it's when they're signing up for classes in in the spring for next fall or whatever it is, just a, 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 a pamphlet of fire, just pay their help. Yep, that sounds good. I agree a lot. I just 
my question would be with hockey with four hundred dollars. Does River Lakes help with that, or is that something that we also help with? Um, I I'm not certain where the the support comes in for families that um, if they participate in hockey, um, if that bear if because the, the that's a fee that fee is higher because of the ice time and the associations. Right. Right. So I'm not certain if that's of, I will need to find out from our activities director how that has been in the past, if that's something we've covered or if, if um, the River Lakes Association has a, I, I'm not certain how that works. I mean, I have no problem helping kids, but then I see something for $400 choose to play hockey. That's a huge expense. Would we be responsible? Oh, I see. Oh, I misunderstood your question. So I, yeah. Yeah. Do they pay that direct? Oh no, I, I assume they pay that to the school. That comes to the school pays the hockey to the hockey. Yep. I think it also goes back to privacy. So mom and dad get the information at home. I'm not sure they want to come back and tell that the three coaches are a, a coach of what's going on. When you talk about that, it's all of our stuff. How do we protect confidentiality for everybody, no matter who they are? that they don't feel that other people in the system would ever know about that conversation. Same as with when we talk yep. about the lunch programs. Yep. Confidential, but the sports are no different, I don't believe. I believe we need to provide for families in a fashion that they can have the discussions at home, which may be involved or not, but if they talk to the school, it is very, very confidential. All right. Well, then we would need to make sure if we're getting the word out to the families that there is something available. Correct. And this is the one person you talk to. Correct. Yeah. Probably right. the activity right. director. Yep. Right. You don't have to talk to the coach. You don't have so to talk. Coach, we have to know. Yeah. Coach, coach we right. have to know. So, do we even have a sheet, a simple sheet that says what help might be available? I. That's easy when you get the family say, hey, listen, if your family's not of, uh, of the means that you want to. Do this, your child wants to participate. These are the messages follow. This is the person that you get yep. to. Yep. Also, his speech is not on here, but I thought that was there. You know, it's part of the Michigan State High School League. It's under non athletic. I'm not seeing it. Oh, that's where it is. I'm like, I'm not seeing it. There we go. Yep. Okay, thank you. Because this is inclusive of, of not just athletics, it's it's yeah, all activities. It's all activities. Yep. 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 all activities. Correct. Yep. Is that looking for a motion to approve the 2022-2023 organizational items as presented? So moved. We have a motion from Bruce. Second. Second from Cheryl. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. B, designate individual with authority. So every year, the uh, Minnesota Department of Education requires that a school board designates an individual who will have the authority to authorize users for the various uh, accounts within the um, Department of Ed uh, sector. So it's everything from submitting um, grant grant requests to budgets to the whole nine yards. Um, so MDE says that the board chooses one individual and that typically and traditionally has been the superintendent. So for motion to identify Superintendent Janelle Boyle at Bullard as the school official with authority to access Minnesota Department of Education secured website for painful area schools. Mm -hmm. Motion from Cheryl. Second. Second from Bruce. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carry. It is regulation I'm uh, sorry, magnify <laughs> credit card authorization. Yep. Yep, no, and this is a pretty simple one too. Um, this is the time of year where if we have any changes in administration um, and credit card authorizations, uh, you'll see that Rick Hendrickson is recommended as our new activities director to have authorization to use the Magnify credit card. We're motion to grant the authorization to Rick Hendrickson for Magnify credit card use. Motion, motion from Rick. Second. Second from Maggie. 
Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Resolution for establishing dates for filing affidavits. Yeah. So this is the first step in um, having our uh, candidacy for school board. So you'll see the resolu resolution establishing the dates to file the affidavits of candidates. I can pull that up if you would like me to. Got that up here. Oh, that's the election. This one. Okay. With that, looking for a motion to establish these dates August 2nd through August 16th. So moved. Got a motion from Bruce. I'll second. Second from Cheryl. That will take a roll call vote. Bruce. Aye. Cheryl. Aye. Thomas. Aye. Peggy. Aye. 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 Passed. Another resolution calling a school district general and special election. Uh, so I'm going to pull this one up and I'm going to share this because this one's a little bit more in depth. Um, this is our resolution calling for the election. Okay. So what you will see um, is that this is the resolution that calls for um, our, it, it's two different things. It's going to call for the school district general election and relating to the increase of the general ele election education revenue of the school district and calling a special election thereon. So there's two different things on here. So this is saying that we have a school board election. And that's just kind of that's general. That's just part of the election cycle. Um, and what makes it special is that we are also asking for referendum at the same time. So you will see that that's why there is um, the language that identifies both of those areas. As we scroll, as we kind of go down, you will see a sample ballot around the. Um, a lot of this is this has all been prepared by our legal counsel because these ballots and this process is very very driven by statute. And so um, you will see that this is going to be the, um, the election ballot. Um, when we know who files for election, those names will be there. Um, and then because there are four seats, there's going to be four write-ins if necessary. And then you will move down to see the um, ballot questions for the operating referendum. So the first question does have the $460 per pupil, um, and that is going to have all the language, the required language about um, increasing taxes. And then you will also see um, the second ballot question, which we talked about, that is contingent, um, that if uh, the indexed for inflation. So obviously nothing in the second one can pass if the first one does not. So those are those are really spelled out on the resolution uh, that you would be entertaining and voting. So can we make a motion for? Yep. Yep. Look for a motion to. Uh, uh, sorry, I was finished reading. Um, look for a motion to um, uh, approve the following resolution as presented. I have, a, I have a question. So we're approving the resolution, but next we're. Does that resolution include the language of the 460? Yes. yes. Okay. Should we look at, were we going to look at the scenarios first? Were we going to have discussion around there or not? This is like the next thing. Okay. Never mind. Oh, they'll, uh, well, okay. That's a good, I did include for your reference and for us just to have in the public, there is the, um, the breakdown. Um, like I couldn't remember if we said we were going to look at that first. And we can, if there is a reference, um, so that, because this will be used in all of our communication. Um, so it, it was there as that approval point. Um, and you'll see the, the breakdown of um, what it is annually and monthly based on a household. 
property value. Um, you, you will see that, and, and we've had a lot of discussion around this table about the fact that there is going to be um, a $39 that will drop away. So that's where you will see the reduction and then the 460 add for the net gain. So you'll see that's why there is that, um, the annual reduction and the annual add. All right, I was just wanna make sure that we, no, that's yep. in the right order if we had it. With that, still look for a motion to approve the resolution as presented. And I'll make that motion. Second. And I have a second from Bruce. Uh, any further discussion? By the roll call vote. Bruce? Aye. Cheryl? Aye. Thomas? Aye. 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 Motion's passed. The resolution's passed. Uh, IMF, fiscal year 24 long term facility maintenance. Okay. So, uh, every year the school district has to um, submit a long term facility maintenance plan. Um, this is the, the, the plan that has been, um, let me pull up the resolutions for you here. Um, actually, the resolution. The resolution. Um, this is approving the district's long term facility maintenance 10 year plan. Um, this has been approved as part of the budget. So this is where for this year we have like the, um, the pipe underneath um, the football field and all of those. I've, I've got a, a grid of, um, let me share this out with you too. This is, this is the, the same plan that has been approved year over year. Um, what happens is it gets revised as we have now we are using part of our long-term facility maintenance money to pay back the bonds. So we're gonna to start to see that change our revenue available. Okay. Um, I, can, I, did not, I did not include this um, with our, because this has been in, in past information, but I thought it might be helpful just to have as a point of reference in our discussion, if there was any question before approving the um, resolution adopting the long term facility maintenance plan. That's called. Okay, somebody help me. So, what are you looking for? We're looking for the LTFM. Oh. Plan. That, I'm not sure I can not pretend. I can see. Yeah, I can see. I can see. Hmm. I bet it'll be there. There it is. Okay. Maybe next time we'll slide. <laughs> I know. Ahead. I've thought about that. I'm sitting the way back. Or so I can just sit up there and have a. It's maybe maybe Miranda wants to change the If you look at the picture, it'll still encompass the sides. We could probably move ahead six feet here. And everybody still be in it. Um, so again, I, I'll I'll just give you a minute to take a look at it. But this nothing has been um, has been revised since the facilities committee. We've not had a facilities committee meeting for a long time, primarily because we've not had um, some financial. We've not had any movement or opportunity to do anything outside of. Um, it's actually probably been scaled back more so. Because of our um, because of our um, commitment of the LTFM money to our bonds, so that's where there just has been no change to the plan. Okay. So with that, yeah. looking for a motion to approve resolution as presented. So moved. Second from Bruce. Second from Jacob. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call. Bruce. Aye. Cheryl. Aye. Thomas. Aye. 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 Resolution passed. Food service bid. All right. Uh, every two years, the district goes out for a bid for um, the dairy and bakery. Um, you will see that there's a recommendation to award the milk, the dairy bid to Kemp's. 
Um, just as a point of reference, if you want to pull up, uh, oh, I'll start with Baker bids. Sorry, I had my papers in the wrong direction. I'll do Baker bids first. Our Baker bid recommendation is to go to panel gold. Um, share this out with the community as well. Uh, as a point of reference, um, our previous contract and our, our previous contract was also with panel gold. Um, and as a point of reference, the 20, the first column there, the sliced kids choice whole grain bread for 22 slices, it comes in at $1.79. Um, our previous bid was $1.43. So that kind of gives you a point of reference. Um, and if we go, probably the most substantial one was the sliced three and a half school whole grain hamburger buns at 60 count. Uh, they used to be 650 and they went up to 820. So there's definitely some increase in that in that bid as well. There was a count. There was a count difference. Um, the count that was on the, the hoagie bun was a double, but that one, when I looked at this, the, um, the hoagie bun, uh, this one came in at uh, 820. The previous bid was 352 for a 24 count. And so they, they bid it out a little bit differently, but um, yeah, because that one caught my eye too, Miranda. Yep. Um, and then I will share the... Uh, The Kemp's bid. Uh, and we also, um, we were also with Kemp's last, uh, the last bid as well. And it was, so the half pint carton, 1% white milk is point. 314 cents this bid. Um, they were at 0.245 cents last go round for the last two years. Um, and then you'll see the five the five five pound tub of cottage cheese, which is ten dollars and fifty-five point six cents this year, uh, was eight dollars and two two cents, two point nine. 8.029 cents. I don't know how to read dollars, but the hundreds, you know, um, or the thousands, because it just doesn't work that way. But um, it, so you can see why that there is some, there is some increase in those bids, but those were the competitive bids. So my recommendation is to adopt, uh, award those, those two uh, vendors the bid. Like for most, is that pretty difficult as those are just getting one bid from companies at all? These are the only two that were that we received. Yeah, I think rule wise, yeah, if you don't have a lot of competition, uh, you know, that can compete at the price anyway. So there's not, I imagine Metro, uh, that's what even St. Cloud, you might get a little bit more, but uh, you know, when they first got on, we got more bids. Yeah, yeah. but the competition just changed. Yeah, it's, it's hard to compete at the prices that the one big person can do. So look for a motion to award the bid to the bread bid to Pan of Gold and milk bid to Cap. That motion from Cheryl. Second. Second from Bruce. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Upcoming meetings. Huh? Not Full much. summer. Full <laughs> summer, which is okay. <laughs> yeah. For last summer, it's okay. <laughs> last summer was. Cool. So, um, nothing, I don't see anything wrong with those two. So, with that, uh, we need a motion to close the meeting. The purpose of conducting a superintendent evaluation at 5 53 p.m. I'll make that motion. Motion second. from Cheryl, second from Jake. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. I am looking for a motion to open the meeting. Make that motion. I'll second. Motion from Rick and a second from Cheryl to open meeting at 7.39 p.m. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Uh, statement for the closed session um, at 5.53 p.m. We close the board meeting uh, for the evaluation of the superintendent. Completing the evaluation, the board has reviewed all areas of responsibility and performance and have complete confidence in the superintendent's direction and leadership. So, uh, yep. well, thank you.
And with that, looking for a motion to adjourn. Move the board, do now adjourn. Got a motion from Jake. I'll second. Oh, oh, Maggie. Second, <laughs> second from Maggie. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Both say no. Carried.